Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to thank everyone who gave feedback on me and my idea of preparing videos about Pekingese care, grooming, products, basically all topics, peaks. Um, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive, so we're going to go forward with this. Um, we are making this YouTube channel. Uh, the channel will be named after my kennel, which is Lushan Pekingese. Lushan means Green Mountain in Mandarin, and uh, I live in Vermont, which is the Green Mountain State. So I think it's a great tribute to the origin of the breed, as well as where I live. Um, this is just a small introductory video where I'm going to introduce our models that will be part of the videos and tell you a little bit about myself and my history with the dogs. And then also tonight, I'm going to make another video, possibly two more, depending on how tired I am. Uh, but one, the first one I'm going to make is going to be uh, grooming tools and products that I use uh, and the reasons I use them for everybody to get ideas of things they might be interested in purchasing or not. Uh, the disclaimer there is that I am endorsed by nobody and no one pays me to say any of this. These are just the things that I have learned through trial and error that work for me. And that doesn't mean they're going to work for everybody. So I also will be talking about um, what types of coat work best for what tools that I've found because my dogs do have different coats between uh, the different dogs and also um, what type of um, uses for them as far as what your goal is in grooming your dogs. Um, one other thing I want to say quickly because a lot of people have talked about advice on clipping their dogs. Um, I fully support clipping peaks to keep them comfortable, cool, and uh, reduce the matting. Um, I'm not of the school that clipping the coat is this huge sin, or that if you clip it, it'll never grow back, or any of that. Um, I just don't think any of that's really true. If your dogs are hot, uh, and you live anywhere warm, and you're not showing them, and you want to clip your dogs, I fully support that. Um, I don't clip any of my dogs right now, because they're currently all show dogs but they probably will be clipped eventually um, after they finish showing and I want to keep them more comfortable. I can't offer advice currently on clipping dogs as I'm not doing it, but I have a lifetime of showing horses and clipping horses. So I can talk a little bit about clippers um, and the different clippers that I think are quality clippers. So uh, possibly in a future video or if anyone wants to private message me, we can talk about that. Okay, so as this is just the introductory video, um, my name is Nora and uh, I am the proprietor of uh, Lushan Pekingese. I got interested in the breed while watching them on TV and researching uh, breeds that I thought would fit my lifestyle. I've been a cat person my whole life. I've had a couple larger dogs um, as an adult uh, that, you know, I love them. They're, they've passed on now and they just didn't fit really my lifestyle as far as their exercise needs. And uh, I want, knew I wanted a smaller dog. I wanted a dog that could be a really good companion that wouldn't be neurotic um, if I, you know, had to kennel it or not be able to exercise it because I am a physician and sometimes I have long hours at work. I'm blessed that I have a husband who is an artist who actually works from home. So we don't actually leave our dogs alone very often, but if we do have to leave them, Peaks are pretty great dogs to be able to have a flexible lifestyle as far as amount of hours that they need to spend running around versus hours that they spend uh, kenneled or um, loose in your home. So I got my first dog in 2017 uh, just as a pet and um, bought him on a limited registration paper, which for people who don't show means that you can't register them um, as full registration so you can't show them in confirmation. It kind of assumes that you're going to spay or neuter the dog. So this was a boy dog, I did plan to neuter him. Um, I sent the breeder photos as he was growing up and when he was about four months old and I had sent her multiple photos, uh, she had messaged me and said, you know, he actually looks through photos a lot nicer than I uh, thought he was going to be based on his you know, evaluation before he left the kennel. And if you would be interested in showing him, um, she was willing to give me an upgrade to my registration for, for no additional money and said that she would mentor me to show him. And at first I thought, nah, that's not my thing. 
But I've shown horses my whole life and I was getting out of horses. And the more I thought about it, I thought, why not? So um, I took her up on the offer. I gave him full registration and I took him to a puppy show where I met her. And she gave me grooming tips and we went in the ring and it was just so much fun. So I proceeded to show him for the first um, year of his life. He attended, okay, I'm going to try not to cry now. Um, he attended four weekends. Uh, every weekend of dog showing is usually between two and four shows individually because every day is a different show. And in the four weekends he showed, um, he was never worse than winner's dog, which means the best non-champion male in his breed. He acquired nine AKC points. You need 15 points to be a champion. Um, he was just a little rock star. He loved doing it. We had so much fun. Unfortunately, I lost him on his first birthday. He died of a mysterious illness that we still, to this day, don't really know what happened. He just, in two-day period, got really sick and went to the emergency vets, and they could not figure out what was wrong with him, and he passed on. But he was he was my heart dog that convinced me that this breed is going to be my whole life, and uh, it worked out great. And I've, um, you know, as much as I will never forget him, and I still can barely think of him without crying. Um, I think he was the dog that was meant to be for me because he uh, convinced me that these are the dogs that I want to have in my life and this is this is what I want to do is get this breed better, this breed, convince other people that this breed is amazing. Um, so on that note, I'm going to introduce you to my dogs that I currently have and who will be the models in these videos and tell you a little bit about each one of them. They're not uh, fully groomed right now. Uh, so if they look a little scraggly, uh, you know, that's why. They all have had a bath within the week, but I didn't, I didn't prep them super nice for this video because I just want you to see that even though my photos always look great, my dogs don't always look like that and that's okay. Uh, your dogs don't always have to look like beautiful show dogs every second of the day because that's not normal. And in fact, if you groomed them to the point where they look like that all the time, you'd probably be damaging their hair. So uh, I just want to kind of show you the way they are in their natural state. And I'm going to grab them one by one and show them to you. And actually, um, the first one I'm going to show you is not a Pekingese at all, but he'll be on a few videos for different reasons. So this is my dog, Snoopy. <laughs> Say hi, Snoops. Snoopy's a little mutt, and he's uh, one of the sweetest dogs you'll ever meet. He's neutered. He is a mixed breed, and we do agility together, and he is super good. Nobody knows what he is, but he looks like a miniature border collie. Uh, he's probably a mix of a spitz breed like a Pomeranian. He has this tail that curves over his back. Pomeranian Chihuahua, you know, is kind of what he was advertised as. We're not sure. He's a little bigger than that. He's about 16 pounds. Um, but he's amazing at agility. And he actually does have a double coat, like a palm. And we do have to groom him, uh, not as much as the Peaks, but we do groom him a lot. He's a good example of a dog that I did not train to be groomed when he was a puppy. So I'm going to use him for videos to show you techniques on how to groom dogs that are not super willing to be groomed. Because he's gotten a lot better, but he's nowhere near as... Um, docile as my Pekingese are as far as laying and being perfect for grooming. So I can show you some tricks I use to get him done when things need to be done to him. And he's really smart, so he's very trainable. So training techniques are good demonstrations with him. So if I get to any videos about other kinds of training, I might use him as well. But anyway, say hi, Snoops. All right, I'm going to go grab another one. All right, so here's my first peek on the table. Uh, this is my bitch. Uh, she's currently the only bitch that we have. Uh, her name is Noli. She is uh, bred in Russia. Hi, sweetie. Um, she's my most affectionate sweet dog. She loves me very much. I'm her, I'm her mommy. Um, her coat texture is softer and thinner than my boy dogs. So with her, I can talk to people who have maybe a little bit more of a pet quality peak coat uh, where it's thin and soft and tends to mat. She does uh, tend to get mats uh, a little bit more than my boy dogs do. So I have a lot of preventative stuff I do with her. Um, as you can see, right, even right now, her hair tends to get a little bit of curl in it 
It has a soft texture. So in some nice photos of her that I post, you'll see it looks bored straight. That's grooming tricks. Her natural coat is a little bit curly and soft. Um, so she's a good one to demonstrate on things that I do with the soft, uh, curlier coat and keep her uh, nice and matte free. Uh, I'll show you the side of her. She's um, she's a, she's a party color peak, so multicolored. She does have a glorious uh, long tail. She's um, 14 months old right now, so she's not. None of my dogs are in full adult adult coat yet. That's another preface I have to make, but she's the closest. Um, so the other ones are pups and coming into adult coat. She has the closest to adult coat, but peaks often will not have a full adult coat until almost two years of age. Um, so we can talk about that more, but that's Miss Noli. All right. This handsome guy is Cheech. Uh, his, I didn't even tell you Noli's registered name. I'm sorry, girl, did not tell. Feels insulting to you. Her name is Santa Fe Deluxe Noli Ray. So she likes to feel fancy. Uh, this is Cheech. His registered name is um, Moon Whispers Queechee. He's a, a Europe bred peak. He is seven months old. Um, and he's from really, really, really nice um, UK uh, bloodlines. Um, the Piku's kennel of Winnie Me in um, England um, are both, both his parents are Piku's bred. So he has a very thick uh, show proper show coat. So he's a grooming challenge for me that um, I hadn't really experienced before I got him. So he has mostly at this point full puppy coat with only a tiny bit of adult hair. So with him, we can talk a lot about uh, debatting techniques removing coat on thick coated dogs. And also I'm gonna show demonstrations with him about how to properly train your puppy for grooming because he's been trained beautifully by his breeders, um, Gordon and Henry uh, in Northern Ireland to lay for grooming. And I wanna show you what it looks like uh, when you properly train a puppy from a very young age to be groomed and how amazing they can be. So this is Cheech or Cheecher or Chichi or lots of things we call him. So he's awesome. And I got one more. This is Mac. Mac's show name is <laughs> Mac's show name is Dreamers Blarney Blessing for Mark. Um, he's a very interesting breed combination of European and American lines. So on his mom's line, his mom was imported from England, and um, her kennel is Jadoran Pekingese and Morley's kennel, and uh, that's from a lot of the Delwyn Pekingese lines. His sire um, is uh, a Mac Island dog, which is a, a Michigan kennel uh, from a breeder whose name was Mark Warren, who was president of the Pekingese Club of America. He unfortunately passed away a few years ago, um, unfortunately at, at a relatively young age. I never got to meet him, but the breeder of uh, this dog, my friend Kathy, was his best friend. And so the name Blessing for Mark came from the... Uh, love that so many people had for him and that I never got to meet him and I wanted to be uh, Give him a little bit of tribute that we're passing on his bloodlines So this is Mac and Mac has a really really nice um, Coarse proper coat. He has the most proper coat of all the peaks I have so far um, Cheech I don't know yet what his adult coat will be like because it hasn't grown in this one is nine months old So he's got a whole lot of adult coat so all this coarse coat is adult. So he um, is the very proper uh, coat for the breed, which is a standoff coarse coat. So I can talk a lot with this one about when you have a dog that has the nice coarse coating that this breed is supposed to have, how we manage that. This one is also one who's pretty good for grooming, but because I trained him to be groomed on the table, he's not quite as good as my sweet Irish baby who's professional uh, breeder handlers trained him from a tiny age. This one was a little delayed because I was still learning. So this one's not quite as good to be groomed. So we can talk about challenges with grooming with this one as well. But um, anyway, he is another one of 
you know, my, my, my sweeties. He's, him and I are very snuggly and, and we love each other very much. Right, Mac? <laughs> All right, so those are my babies and um, that's it for this intro video. So this is perfect because the other thing I wanted to talk about was that I'm gonna try to make each of these videos about exactly 15 minutes. I want them to be short so that you can look up any specific topic you want and only watch that topic and not have to watch an hour long video of a full groom. So that way, um, if you're only having small challenges, you can target them. Uh, if you need to know everything, you can watch all the videos. Uh, but I think it'll be good to make smaller videos. So the first one I'm gonna do next, after I go downstairs and get all my stuff together, regroup, and um, maybe let these guys out to potty one more time, uh, will be on grooming tools and products that I use. So I hope you follow us on this YouTube channel and I hope we get to see a lot more of each other. And please feel free at any time to add me as a friend on Facebook and private message me any questions you have. Nora Kathleen is my Facebook name. I'm in all the Pekingese groups. And I hope to um, hear from a bunch of you and I hope you all enjoy these videos. See you soon.